Hi everyone, welcome back to Java One for All. And in this video, we are going to talk about how Java works. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we could go on and on how it works behind the scenes, but it's just an introduction. We have more than 200 videos that I'm going to cover a lot of details. And this is what we need to get started. So let's go to draw.io and let's put some shapes here. So let's start drawing some boxes. Who doesn't like boxes? We have a couple operating systems. So for example, we have Windows, we have Linux, and we also can add here uh, Mac OS, for example. So I hope at this point you are a bit familiar uh, with how like software development works, what is software, what is a computer, what is harder, and uh, things that uh, you do on a daily basis. Because this is how it works. We usually have our computer. So we can even draw a computer here. I will draw a computer here. Imagine that this is a computer. So your computer, it's a set of uh, hardware. We have hard drive, we have processor, we have uh, memory, and uh, we have PCU and so on. So these uh, components, they need to be managed. And the software responsible for this management are the operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, and so on. So when way, way, way back then we were developing uh, applications, we used to develop applications directly to the operating system. So for example, have you ever seen those .exe uh, applications? So for example, PowerPoint. Uh, when you are installing, you have the .exe from executable. And this is what represents usually the Windows applications. If you try to run that on Linux, it will not work. You need to virtualize. It's a process like you are simulating as you are in Windows, but inside an operating system and that's Linux. And the same for macOS, that the extension of the software is usually .dmg. D as a database. <laughs> so how it used to work? We used to have uh, apps. So I will draw another box here, this one. So imagine that I'm developing one app. That was in 1988. That's the year I was born, not the year I was developing software. We used to have different types of app, one app to run on Windows and another app, even if it's the same app, uh, to run on Linux and also this same app, like doing the same thing, the same functionalities, but in different programming languages. So this one could be, uh, for example, uh, let's say C, uh, C++, or this one could be um, Python didn't exist back then, I don't know, maybe COBOL and so on. So we have different types of programming languages and back then you were developing your software to run directly into the operating system. So basically it was one-to-one -one relationship between your app and the um, operating system. So the Java guys, when they were developing, they thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could write once and run everywhere. And that's why we have this uh, slogan that is still used uh, to this day uh, when we talk about Java. When we say run, uh, write once and run everywhere, it means that we are trying to use the same language, the same piece of code, the same source, and just executing different operating systems. So how can we achieve that? Let's use an analogy. If you are an English speaker and you would like to talk to someone that only speaks Japanese. How can you achieve that? So one way is hiring a translator, a professional translator that can both understand English and Japanese. So he will have input in two different ways and he will do this uh, translation for you and you will be able to talk to the person in, uh, that's the only Japanese speaker and the Japanese speaker will be able to talk to you that's the only English speaker. So thinking about this analogy, this is what's happening with Java. So Java is one powerful language because we have something in between that will do this 
for us. So there is a layer here. The best way to solve this problem is like writing a layer that will go on top of the operating systems. So this layer, it is an application, and this application is responsible for understanding what my app is saying and talking to the operating system. And this is called JVM, Java Virtual Machine. So basically, Java Virtual Machine, it is an application that can understand what the app that I'm developing, that's using the extension.java. We are going to go into details in a moment and can talk to the operating, operating system, basically machine code. So the Java virtual machine can talk to these guys and my app Java will talk to the Java virtual machine. But William, are you saying that the Java virtual machine is one application that I can install in the different operating systems? No, the Java virtual machine, and when we do that in the next video, when you try to download, you have to download the Java virtual machine specifically for your operating system. So you have a JVM for Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris, and so on. So you download the virtual machine that can understand your operating system, but the code that you are going to develop here can be executed in any of the operating systems that has a Java virtual machine. So basically the input here will always understand your code, but the output will depend on the Java virtual machine you just downloaded. So you are basically saying William, that I can get my Java application here and send directly to the Java virtual machine. No, actually we need a couple more steps. So the .java class uh, is what we call the file is only for us as humans to understand what is happening. So this is basically what we call uh, a language, a high level language that can uh, be understood by humans. So if I get a class, a, a Java file, and I give it to someone, even if they are not developers, they will at least be able to read and they will be able to tell something about that code. If you write good code and you are watching this video, you will be able to write a good code. They even be, uh, probably will be able to tell what this code is going to do. So this is the high level. And uh, when we go to low level, we are going more towards the uh, operating system. So the more low level the, the, the code is, the language is, the better performance because you will be writing directly basically to the operating system, but is way more difficult. So what we have to do here is the Java virtual machine will not understand the .java extension. So there is a process in between. So we say that Java is a compiled language. What does it mean compiled? It means that it will get the code that you wrote and it will pass through some transformation. And this transformation, it's basically compiling. So your app, .java will become this app.class. What this class means? This means that this file .java was compiled and then uh, this became a bytecode. So basically this app1.java became through compilation and app1.class, this is the bytecode and the bytecode is what the Java virtual machine can understand. So the Java virtual machine will always understand only the byte code. And the byte code is something that's not easily readable by humans. I'm going to show that in the next video, but it's pretty complex. So how do we actually run? How do we execute? So we have a couple of ways of doing this. When we are talking about software development, we want to develop applications with Java. We are going to uh, run a Java development kit. So basically, there are two ways, a Java development kit and Java runtime environment. So if you are only going to execute, technically you just need the Java runtime environment installed, but if you're going to develop, you need a Java development kit. This kit will have, for example, something that we can use to compile that's called Java C, 
And there are other things, for example, uh, the bug that we can also use and we are going to see throughout this course. So there are two options, both of them, they do have a Java virtual machine, but we are not going to install a GRE because the JDK will have a GRE and we are going to focus only on the development kit. So this is the big picture of Java. What you need to take from this class is that you have your source code, that's .java. It's going to be compiled into a bytecode called uh, the same name of your file, but instead of .java, .class. And then this .class is what the Java virtual machine will understand. And then the Java virtual machine will be able to talk to the operating system it is installed. So basically that's what you need to know for now. So let's move on to the next video and let's see how we can install the Java virtual machine in a Windows machine. See you there.